Hello, everyone. Welcome to the market update here for Tuesday, December the 27th. As always, if you have any questions uh, during the week or any questions I don't get to here in the live class, make sure you send those to jerry at traderspro.com. Be happy to answer those for you. Um, this week is going to be a, a little bit of a quiet uh, week. Um, you know, the, the the week between Christmas and New Year's tends to be, well, usually it's pretty low key. Um, now I did, I have been talking about, you know, a big sell-off uh, taking place. Uh, you know, I, I, I started talking about that uh, right at the very end of, of the November, beginning of December. We did get a, a decent drop um, this month, but uh, you know, one of the unique parts about that that call I made was that. Uh, Usually December tends to be more of a bullish month. Uh, you know, we we talked about the bullish seasonality that that tends to take place, and so actually, the, you know, the drop we had was was a pretty decent drop for a December. But now that we're in the week before, uh, or the week between Christmas and New Year's, I you know, it's really it would really be rare to get a, a, a panic sell off or a really big sell off uh, during this week. I don't see a lot of news events happening this week that would would trigger any any. Uh, real selling or massive buying. I kind of see it as being a little bit more of a flat week, up a little bit, down a little bit for, for the week. I do think though, as we get into, into January, those first couple weeks of January is where I think we could see um, a much bigger decline or see the decline that I was I was kind of, uh, um, that the charts were kind of lining up for and the indicators were lining up for. Um, that's kind of now, been been where I'm looking at uh, as far as um, that that bigger decline. Now it, it could that could change by Thursday's class. Something could happen, and and uh, and uh, I, I could be uh, uh, you know talking about something else. But um, it just seems like it's it's really kind of quiet right now, and, and not a whole lot's going on. And and um, the markets kind of reflect that. We're, we have a little bit of a mixed market today. The Dow's up, the other indexes are down. And uh, we'll take a look at those those charts here in just a second. This also tends to be a little bit of a laid laid back week for me. Um, a lot of times I'll take it off uh, the week as most people do. It's a time to take vacations and things like that. Um, but uh, I tend to I this week I am going to be doing the classes, but. Um, I probably am not going to be doing the analysis as in depth as I normally do. Um, you know, I usually spend a lot of hours, uh, you know, looking for for stocks. Or, um, but I I'm going to back off a little bit this week. Instead of taking the week off, I'm just going to I'm going to be just kind of going through, um, you know, kind of a, a revised uh, routine. Uh, not as many hours uh, putting into the analysis, but I, I think. It's appropriate this week because, I, like I said, I don't think there's a lot that's going to be going on. There's not a lot of uh, events taking place. Um, but as far as the, the conditions, you know, not much has really changed from Thursday class. Uh, momentum is still down. Uh, it is in that still in that extreme reversal risk range, but it's it's kind of uh, you know I usually look at this that the halfway point of these bars. It's to the right of that halfway point. This means it could still become even more extreme, but I again, like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, I think that'll probably, if there's a bigger sell-off coming, it, it's probably going to happen uh, next week or or within those first couple weeks of January. Um, breadth is still kind of right in the middle. Uh, that's where it was um, on Thursday, and then sentiment still too too high, too complacent, and this is one of the main reasons why. Um, I still think there's a big, bigger sell-off coming. Is that uh, the market is just too, too complacent? Um, the buy-sell ratios uh, a little bit wide, uh, but like I said, this is the same way on on Thursday. They were a little stretched, but they could become more stretched. Um, but we are, we need to recognize that we are in a little bit of a stretch condition to the downside. Now, there's there's two ways that you can alleviate an, an over overbought or oversold condition. Obviously, you could move in the opposite direction. If you're oversold, the market could rally a little bit and alleviate that oversold condition. If the market is overbought, it could pull back a little bit. 
it can also just kind of move sideways. And like I said, um, I think this week will tend to be a little bit more of a sideways week. And if that does play out that way, you could see some of these uh, indicators uh, become less extreme. Uh, just just on the fact that we're we're not really going anywhere, kind of moving sideways. Uh, this sentiment indicator is close to that oversold area, um, and we need to recognize that. We don't want to just dismiss it as, you know, it doesn't mean anything. The market could stage a rally um, that could cause that to, to move up a little bit. Um, you can also see, though, that it can dip well below that and become more extremely oversold um, if there were to be a, a, another sell-off here before the end of the month, or excuse me, it's to start the new year. All right, let's take a look at the, the uh, individual charts. S&P, and we've been kind of moving sideways for the last uh, week. Most of the last week was, was kind of just sideways here. Now, what I think could happen, I still think the market has potential to rally a little bit this week, not only because we, we have those, uh, we're kind of close to some of those over near-term oversold conditions, but um, the, the chart pattern looks like it might be this little first move up might be wave A, this little pullback right here, wave B, and, and maybe we, we're rallying up for wave C, and it forms maybe a bearish ABC pattern. Um, now, one of the areas that I've talked a lot about is this 389 area. Now, sometimes when I throw out some of these numbers and these ranges, I personally don't get too caught up with the exactness. Meaning, I'm not saying that we're gonna we could rally exactly to 389 and then reverse exactly right there. There are people that that get caught up in exact areas and and look for exact uh, uh, reversal spots. Uh, mostly, those people are are looking at intraday charts and doing real real short term trades, uh, day trades, and and uh, scalping and that type of trading. And uh, they're they're looking for influence levels of different um, you know uh, support or resistance areas and. They tend to get pretty exact with those. Um, with our type of trading, you know, we're not looking to be jumping in and out of things um, uh, uh, during the day. Uh, we're looking at more areas. So there's support or resistance areas that that are significant. And so, really, this 389 area could be could actually be anywhere between 388 and 390 when I when I look at the charts. Uh, but the, the most important thing is that we're just looking for this in general area. And you can see a lot of that comes from there's, you could draw a trend line across here, a little bit of support in that area here, support, support that could end up becoming resistance. Here it was resistance when it, it pulled back. And then this also lines up with, you know, one of the characteristics of a, of an ABC pattern is very often if that's wave A, Wave B, Wave C will tend to be about the same length as, as Wave A. All of that would kind of line up in this in this area here. So if I'm trying to, if I think the market could rally this week a little bit, and I'm trying to determine where I think it might rally to without really taking off. Now, could it break out and have a big move up, um, get all the way up into this area up here? Again, these things are always possible. Um, I just don't see it as being probable right now, but obviously you, you, you have to adjust with whatever the market ultimately ends up doing. Um, now, one thing that could you could argue with this is that, um, you know, one thing I always talk about with ABC patterns is that wave B should not, uh, usually doesn't exceed the beginning of wave A. So if I'm calling that wave A, wait, let me erase this here. If I'm calling this wave A. Here's the beginning of wave A. This day right here on, on uh, actually that's uh, last Thursday, actually when we were having class, came off the lows there. Um, you know, still though it went lower, did that, you know, you, you talk about irregular, it, that would be considered an irregular ABC pattern, which tends to be, they, they tend to be pretty rare. Um, but I wanted to point that out that I'm not ignoring that, that I do recognize that that's, that, that could be rare. But 
if that's the case, then this could be a new low and maybe we're starting a bearish ABC pattern right now. Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe we do get a rally this week and or where it kind of goes back and forth or choppy or sideways. The bottom line is that the behavior, this is why when I talk about ABC patterns and stair steps, I, I, I try not to get you, I, I don't want you to focus too much on the ABC pattern it has to be three moves. Um, you know, sometimes you can get a real kind of choppy back and forth. I, and so I tend to want to look at a corrective move as being just looking a little bit more choppy, more sideways. And that's the behavior we've had over the last week. It's more choppy, more sideways. So what you want to do is say, okay, what was the previous, the, the market is moving more choppy, more sideways right now. What was the previous direction it was moving in before, immediately before it started moving sideways? Well, the, the, the previous impulsive move was down. And so whenever this is done, I don't know what, whether it's this week or next week or whenever, we should have another move down. It should, uh, once this is corrective behavior is over, it should continue the probable direction for it to continue in the direction it was moving in before it moved sideways. Now, again, these are general statements. Uh, doesn't mean they have to continue that, that direction or that they have to continue that direction for very long. You know, we had an impulsive move right here more of a choppy sideways corrective behavior here. And then after that was done, we had an impulsive, short impulsive move up, basically a one day move up, but that's all it needed to do to fulfill that, that uh, behavior. And then it uh, reversed, it reversed trend. Now you have impulsive down. Now you've got kind of a corrective behavior. We should have another impulsive move down at some point. Okay. So that's what I'm basing this on. If you're wondering, you know, talking about a, a big decline, in January, am I just guessing that that's happening or, or trying to just uh, throw out a prediction and hope it works out? No, it's just based on analysis. And and the biggest thing is that VIX, uh, the VIX having this decline already and the VIX not showing any sort of concern that usually tells you that you're just getting started with a downward move, not, not ending a downward move. Um, and so there's a lot that goes into this. And a lot of it I've covered in previous updates. So if you missed some of those previous updates, you know, especially as it relates to this bigger decline, what you would want to do is spend time this week and go back to uh, starting with that November 30th update, or was it November 30th or, or might have been December 1st was the first time I mentioned it. One of those updates, uh, either one of those Tuesday or Thursday classes. Uh, and then, review some of the, the updates since then. Um, but that's where I kind of covered it, this stuff in a little bit more detail. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the market is mixed a little bit today. The Dow is up, but you can see it's not up by very much. And, and the candle looks kind of indecisive, uh, kind of an indecision candle today. Um, Again, not not any conviction. So I can't look at today, at least so far, and say I, I, there's a strong probability we're moving up or a strong probability we're moving down. It's not giving us anything. Um, and a lot of times when I see that a day like today, in the context of of, um, of what we're looking at, a lot of times I don't really go and start looking for trades. Um, there's no reason to. I spend. Uh, you know, a couple hours looking for at charts and looking at and, and looking for potential trades when the market conditions are saying I could go either way right here. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm guessing um, uh, on the on the direction of the market. So I like to see a little bit more conviction up or down um, uh, before I start putting in the work to try to find the trades to match that market direction. And that's what we're doing. We're, a lot of this early analysis in these updates is just to try to determine the, the market direction. Why do you do that? Well, because, you know, on, on any, any strong move that the market makes, up or down, you can expect that, that 80 to 90 percent of individual stocks are going to move in that direction. And if you can get that market direction right, if I can uh, uh, have a very high probability the market is moving up, it, it takes a lot of the pressure off of picking the individual stocks. I don't have to be perfect in which stock I pick um, because if 80% of the stocks are moving in that same direction, I should still be able to make money if I can get that, if I can line it up with that market direction. 
Now we're going to go a step further and we're going to say, okay, well, that's true, but we've got the software that can, that can tell us which stocks are outperforming the other ones, where the money is going into uh, with the movement of these stocks, uh, what these big professionals are getting into, because they're showing you with the, the what they're doing when in the chart. They're they're showing you where they're putting their money. Um, we can add that probability uh, to analyzing the market direction, and and now you have a really high probability of of uh, being on the right side of the trade. So that's if you're new right now and you're wondering what we're doing that's that's why we're going through and looking at these these individual charts we're trying to determine um the market conditions the market direction that first part with the direction alerts is trying to determine um ex extremes are we overbought or sold is that rubber band being stretched in one direction where it could snap back in the other other direction uh, we're looking at some of those things in those in those uh, uh for that those direction alerts all right, so the Dow is up a little bit, but but not much. It's it's still this looks even more like it could be that that bearish ABC pattern. We didn't really go uh, beyond what you know the end of wave A there. It got back to the beginning of wave A. If that is again, we won't know. We won't know for sure if this is a bearish ABC pattern until we're looking back on it uh, later on. Um, but it just kind of has that feel right now. And then you line that up with typically what what goes on the week between Christmas and New Year's. It's usually usually uneventful, which, again, the professional traders want it to be that way because they want to take their vacations and they don't want to they don't want to have a chaos in the middle of their their Aruba vacation, you know, uh, where they have to jump on the computer when the weather's nice and, and uh, start selling or start buying because the market's taken off in a direction. They like the quiet to, the quiet week. Um, doesn't mean it's always quiet, though. Uh, I do want to point that out, but um, it just has that feel this year that it, that it might just kind of be uneventful. All right, the Qs uh, are down the most today, um, and that's, I think, significant uh, from the standpoint of we, we tend to look at the Qs as the leadership uh, group. The tech sector tends to lead, particularly the chip stocks tend to lead. Um, not follow and so the fact that that um, this is having more of a bearish day that again fits into my my uh, analysis of uh, expecting that the next move major move in the market should be to the downside um, if if indeed the, the tech stocks are leading the way all right um russell 2000 again same thing not not too much uh difference there there is a significance in the TLT. Last Thursday, I talked about how we were in the last Tuesday and Thursday last week, I talked about how the, the TLT was really at a spot where if this was going to be a bullish ABC pattern, this is about as, as, as far as you would want the wave C to go. And this is why you, this is why I teach this. It, you know, you're already at a point where wave C is about almost twice the length of wave A. Although that can happen um, at times, um, usually, that's why I say that you're usually looking for wave C to be about the same length as wave A. And about usually is, is, is less than twice as long. Uh, so you, when you're getting twice as long, you're really stretching that, that behavior. Um, and then now we, we've gone right below it. So this is now an impulsive move down, it looks like. It, it would really be a stretch to call this uh, wave A, wave B, wave C. Uh, now, what could be going on is maybe maybe this is a larger correction. Maybe this is wave one, two, three, four, five of a wave A, and then you get wave B, and then you get wave C, and then the bond market takes off. So could this still be part of a of a of a bottoming process that eventually leads to the, the bond market going up again or reversing that long downtrend back into an uptrend. Yeah, it still could be that process. Um, but in the near term, this is, this is no longer looking like a correction of this move right here by itself. This could be maybe, like I said, be wave A, wave B, wave C, where it's a longer drawn out uh, correction. Um, 
but th this is that that's too impulsive looking now. So what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that if that is true, then then we're going to see a lot more back and forth in the bond market. And if it st does start to rally, what I'd be looking for is 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 it look like a sluggish type rally? Does it look like it's acting like a wave B? Um, and 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 there could be another move down. So I I wouldn't be a, aggressively um, buying bonds here. Uh, with it acting like it could still have some choppiness to it, um, and uh, even if it, even if I did feel like it turned the corner and is is starting a new uptrend, it could be could take a little bit of time to do that. And that's actually pretty normal. You have a big long decline in something, you know. That's why I look for that kind of bowl shaped move to form um, because it takes a while for the buyers to get to to get confidence to jump back in. They don't you don't usually you don't see V-shaped bottoms very often where you have these big massive declines and then it goes right back up. Um, it does happen. You do see that from time to time. But when you when you do see that, uh, what makes it suspicious when that happens is there wasn't enough, there really wasn't enough fear down here to, to really, that you really need to get a nice big huge move up. Um, you like to see that base that, that kind of bowl shaped move where there's a little bit of damage, people are a little bit fearful to buy. That usually what is what can fuel a much bigger move up. That's why I like, the, I really prefer those bowl shaped uh, bottoms than a V shaped bottom. Um, and that could be what this is kind of forming is, you know, you jump out to a longer term chart to get a little bit of context here. You know, it could be that maybe it comes back, maybe it's going to come back down, form a little bit of a double bottom, um, maybe even hover around here a little bit longer and then start to work its way back up, kind of kind of start forming a little bit of that bowl-shaped move there. Um, we'll have to see. But so the bottom line on the bonds is that it's in a spot right now where it's not real clear. It, it's acting more impulsive to the downside, so I would lean more towards it continuing to lower. It, if it does start to move up, you've got you've got impulsive up, impulsive down. What happens if you get impulsive up again? That does happen, uh, but a lot of times, what that does is just it just it muddies everything. You you don't you don't know what you're seeing back to back to back impulsive moves. It, it's it's just an indecision type. Although the behavior is impulsive, the the overall behavior, bigger picture behavior, is indecisive. Why is it? Why are you getting these sharp moves in opposite direction? Uh, it, it it's not it's not telling you uh, uh, the the probability of that direction, and so you don't want to you don't want to put too high of a expectation on that that uh, on that direction. Um, you know that's part of what we're doing is we're trying to analyze how is the how is the chart acting is it acting like it wants to go higher is it acting like it wants to go lower or is it acting like it doesn't know where where the hell it wants to go and sometimes that's the hardest to see is is a chart that's acting like it doesn't know where the hell it wants to go but you're because you want it to tell you a direction you you almost uh, you almost see what you want to see you really have to be careful of that in in, in uh, technical analysis because I I've seen it I've experienced it over my career where and I'm trying to fight that a little bit right now I'm I'm very confident we're going to get this bigger decline um, but there are days where I challenge myself I say okay let's start my analysis today from a standpoint I'm bullish on the market let's see if I can make a strong bullish argument of why the market can go up. I almost force myself to to question my other analysis. And and there have been times in my trading career where by doing that, I've actually come up with stronger evidence of, of the market going up instead of down. And and you know that that I'm not saying that I've uh, completely changed my my trades that direction, but uh um in some cases, it's 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 caused me to not lose money because um, you know I didn't get overly aggressive when I shouldn't have been overly aggressive. Um, it's not a bad idea to challenge um, your direction. That's the only way you can keep yourself from from forming a, a bias 
um, that where you start to only see what you want to see. If I if I really feel strong the market's going to go down, then almost every chart I'm going to look at, I'm my I'm, I'm immediately going to believe that stock is going to go down, and so I'm going to look for reasons it's going to go down as opposed to how is it really acting. Is it is it acting like it's going to go down, or am I just kind of forcing um, um, my analysis to project that? And I know it sounds crazy. But that's why technical analysis gets criticism out there is that people will say, well, you, yeah, you're, you say you're reading the charts, but you're, 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 a, you know, a chart can tell you whatever you want it to tell you. And in some cases, that's true if you, if you allow it to, to do that, if you don't challenge your, yourself. And, and part of that too is when it's not telling you a clear direction, when it's telling you it doesn't know where it wants to go and, and you start projecting a clear direction on it, um, uh, you know that that can get you into trouble as well. By the way, I'm not suggesting I do it perfectly now with my my 20 years plus of experience, but um, I, all I'm saying is I try to challenge myself from time to time to do my best to avoid uh, developing uh, uh, biases that are too strong um, to where I only see what I want to see. And by the way, what muddies us even further is when you have trades. If I've got trades, if I if I expect the market to go up, and uh, and I've got a strong reason to believe it's going to go up, and I've got a whole bunch of uh, trades that I have uh, that are bullish trades, that that comp uh, complicates things as well because you know there's going to be pain if you're if you're wrong about that market going up and it, you you start to see clues that actually it's going to go down. That means you're going to be stopping out of trades. That means pain. You're losing money. Uh, that can. That's another thing that can uh, add to developing um, um, biases uh, on your analysis as well. And that that's part of why it's so important to keep the risk amounts of your trades so low. That 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 uh, that that pain isn't going to be so much that it causes you to to turn a blind eye to what the charts are actually telling you. And that's something I emphasize all the time when I when I get into trades. I want to look at that risk about how much would I lose if I get stopped out. The the the, the calculator there will tell you. In fact, I, I might get into a trade today for the for the um, portfolio, and I'll show you that process. I'll show you what I'm analyzing when I when I pull up that little uh, calculator. All right, so. Bond market acting more impulsive to the downside. Gold is, is something I've, I've really been bullish on. I'm still pretty bullish on it. Um, it's been a little bit more choppy sideways lately, but that's actually a bullish thing because it it uh, it it's been you know the the impulsive moves have been to the upside, so it's it's kind of stair stepping its way up. Um, I, I think it's it's having a little bit of trouble breaking out right here. Um, but uh, once it does, I think it's gonna it's gonna really take off. Um, I've given my reasons for this uh, as well that uh, this will this could end up being kind of a safety play if if economic conditions start to deteriorate a little bit and with inflation still being high and could be high for a little while. We really didn't see that flight to gold early on, and and it looks like we're starting to see it now. And I think it's just getting started. I think there's there's a lot further that uh, that gold could rally. Gold and silver, for that matter, uh, a lot of the, the precious metals could really uh, have a good run here. Oil. Now, last time we talked, uh, I was bearish on oil, looking at this as a potential bearish ABC pattern. That still could be the case, but if you look at typically when you move past a 50% retracement, you know, here was that 50% retracement area. So. It still made sense to be bearish on oil, and this could be a bearish ABC pattern leading to another move down. Now that we moved up a little bit deeper into that retracement zone, it's the probability of that is significantly declined. Now, it's still you can still get deep retracements. This is going to be a key area right here, though. If we break out above that, you have to turn more bullish. That, that was the, the previous lower high. You had a lower low. That would become a higher uh, higher high. This would then be a higher low right here in that context. Um, 
So the fact that we're beyond the uh, 61.8 percent retracement, which is as, as far as you really want it, you know, 50 percent is is kind of the normal retracement area. You get past 61.8 percent. These are Fibonacci ratios. If you're if you're wondering if you're hearing that for the first time. Once you get above that, the probability of, of declining um, from that becomes less probable. Still, still possible, but less probable. It, it's in a no man's land, to be honest with you, because it, it's it's it still could be a bearish ABC pattern. If this is a wave C, wave C is getting a little bit longer than wave A, but it's still not. Uh, it's still about the same length as wave A. Um, this would be kind of similar to what I talked about with the bond market, where if it's going to decline and go down, this is the area where it has to, it has to do it within the next couple of days. It goes up any further, the, the uh, probability shifts, and, and maybe we do start to see a bigger rally in oil, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. We made a lot, made some money on oil trades. Uh, if, if and there's a lot of them out there that that uh, that could. Uh, Still move higher, and um, you know we could we could throw a few oil trades into our portfolio, see if we could make some money from it. If if it does, and I would I would consider that if we could break out above this this previous lower high right here, go to a higher high. Now the candle today is in this in the size. So that's actually a little bit of a bearish reversal candle. So, like I said, by Thursday we should know. Um, whether oil is starting to move down or it's breaking out above this level, we need to turn a little bit more bullish on it. We should know by by Thursday. By the way, I hate uh, one thing I hate about I love holiday uh, days in the market because it, it's an extra day to not have to worry about anything, any trades. Um, that's why I like my weekend so much. Uh, I don't have that in the back of my mind. I know the market's not open, so my moves, <laughs> I can't have anything go in my direction. I can't have it go against me. Um, but these, these these Monday holidays always throw me off. I, I almost forgot like, I had class today because usually I have Monday. I don't have any classes on Monday. And uh, and so, you know, this this feels like Monday today, but it's Tuesday. I almost missed the, missed the class. Uh, I had to keep reminding myself. In fact, luckily I set some alarms on my, phone to make sure I was reminded that I had class today. But uh, so this is going to be a real, it's going to be real quick to get to Thursday this week. Um, it's it's going to feel like a Wednesday, but it's, uh, but we should know which direction oil is moving in. Um, well, I say that if the candle, this candle remains intact, looks like this at the end of the day. Um, but even then, I, I think well, I think we'll have a better idea by Thursday what uh, what oil's doing. The dollar still is trending down, but it, it's been moving a little bit more sideways recently, uh, and that's that's normal within a downtrend or an uptrend, whatever trend you're moving in. That sideways move is just a consolidation, but it's still acting like it wants to go lower, which would tend to be more bullish for gold and for oil for commodities. Um, so maybe that is a little reason why we're seeing an oil rally is that because the dollar is is uh, still continuing to move down. The VIX, a um, little bit of a move up today in the VIX, uh, although not a, any sort of strong move up. Let me switch this over. So you can see here's where we closed yesterday. Here's where we're trading today. Now. One thing I, I must emphasize when you're analyzing the VIX is, is don't get into the habit of thinking that the VIX tells you something significant every day. Most of the time, it's only telling you what you already know. It all The VIX today is only telling me that uh, the market is down. S&P is down a little bit. The VIX should be up a little bit. It's up a little bit. It, it, I don't see any major uh, signal from the VIX today. And I just think that's important that you don't you don't you don't um, expect the VIX to tell you something significant every day because otherwise, if you have that approach, sometimes you can read into it more than it's telling you. You know, um, kind of going back to what I was saying when you have a strong bias in a direction. Um, the, that's why I say also with the VIX, you really want to pay attention to. Uh, 
two things ma mainly is the VIX and the market moving in the same direction. Anytime the VIX and the market are moving in the same direction, pay attention because normally they're always going to be, well, normally they're moving in the opposite direction. I shouldn't say always. No, normally they're moving in the opposite direction. So when they're moving in the same direction, pay attention to what that could be telling you. And number two is proportional move. If you get a, a small downward move in the market, but a big move up in the VIX, that could be significant. That could be telling you that there's a lot more worry than the, the, the market is telling you. Or if you get a, let's say you get a, a big move down in the market, but a small move up in the VIX, that could be telling you that, uh, that the, the professional traders aren't too worried that, that the market is going to go that much lower. Uh, and that the selling might be getting close to being done. So there's, you know, there are a lot of these subtle things that the, the VIX could be telling you, but it's not really telling me too much today. In fact, you know, it, it's telling us it's, it looks more indecisive today, which is what the whole market is telling us. It's looking looking more indecisive. Um, chip stocks still leading the way down. They tend to be leadership stocks. They are, they're almost going to new lows. Uh, so that's not very bullish for the market. Transportation stocks tend to be uh, leadership stocks compared to the Dow. Um, yeah, this looks like a little bit of a, uh, not much different than what the Dow looks like. It looks like it could, it, it's still possible. This could be an A, B, C. Overall though, this looks corrected. This looks impulsive. When this is done, it should have another move down. It's not really telling us anything that different from what the Dow is showing us. Um, but sometimes it does, and that's why we, we look at it. Bitcoin um, looks like it could be starting to break the support area right here. So it might be getting ready to start another move down, although it's still, there is still, it's still kind of in a support area here. So could it still bounce and could we still be moving sideways? Sure. What you'd really want to see is do we get a clear drop below, Let's see if I can draw it below this area right here. We're kind of right at it. We got a clear drop below that. That would be very bearish for Bitcoin. Overall, though, the trend is down at least, and it's acting like it should continue to, to go lower. All right. As far as, uh, yeah, well, again, the conditions are more sideways. Could go either way. Um, but I will go over a couple of stocks I liked off of the the muscle stock, the new buy list here, you go to muscle stocks and you look at the new buys. These are stocks that uh, are usually outperforming the market and have gone from a hold to a buy. Now, I usually don't go buy it just because of that, but I, you know, if you've got a nice chart pattern that looks bullish, you can, um, you can use that as additional confirmation this first one here uh, I don't know I would chase this you're you're already kind of you've already had a big move you've broken out you're already in extreme reversal risk so the danger there is you buy in and, and then it goes into another pullback I, I would wait to see if it pulls back it might pull back and retest the breakout area and then that's then it's a good time to buy if it, if it starts to move back up again plus you'd want to You'd want oil to look the oil chart to look more bullish as well to to be able to have that uh, continuation. Um, I did like this STNG. There's a couple of these shipping uh, stocks, transportation shipping stocks. Although the candle today is a little bit bearish, but it seems to be uh, kind of holding this support area up through here, higher highs, higher lows. Pretty decent trend there. Let me switch this to signals here so we can see it. So it barely went back. Actually, it might be going back to a hold signal when this updates. It's showing a yellow hold signal there. So just to get a little, if you're interested in this chart, I wouldn't buy in on the down candle day uh, like that. And the fact that it's gone back to a hold, well, you could just wait to see if it goes back to a buy signal as, as additional confirmation or at least look for a bullish candle to, to, if it starts to break though below this low, that would that would kind of disqualify it for me because not, not only would it go to a lower low, but it would break that upward trend line that it's been on. 
And both of those things would be um, it, not necessarily catastrophic, but it could be going into a bigger ABC pattern, bigger correction, and I wouldn't want to write it down if that's the case. And that, those would be signals that it could have a, a bigger move down at that point. Not to mention the market. I just don't see the market momentum there keeping up, um, uh, especially going into the new year. Uh, so that's something to keep keep it uh, keep be aware of as well. I also like this TRMD, another shipping company, kind of the same thing. This one's trend. This trend line's down a little bit further. Um, barely broke out right here above this high. But now we're back below it. Let's see if it can. Actually, this one you might want to see if it can break back above that area again. I think close. It did break back above it today, but can it close above it? That would be a more a better entry if you could get that little bit of that confirmation. All right. Um, portfolio. I made some changes. You know, thing. Let me pull up the SPY because on. Friday's or Thursday's class, um, I said we we can't we are down here a little bit. I we were off the lows a little bit, but I said if we come off the lows quite a bit, I might um, close out a couple of those um, uh, inverse ETFs. I was in uh, I was in three of them. Remember, I was in the SOXS, the SARK, and the and the uh, What's the third one? SPWX or something like that. What was it? That was the SP SPXS. So um, we came off the lows, and um, I just didn't want to have too many of them. In case we did rally a little bit, we were moving into again. I talked about that seasonality period, usually the week before. Christmas, week after week between Christmas and New Year's tends to be a little more bullish, so I didn't want to have that many inverse ETFs. So I lightened up. I got out of the SLXS and the SARK, kept the SPXS, um, and then I kept the gold trade. Um, I'm I'm in this gold trade longer longer term, so I'm not. My stop is all the way down here. So, but so far this looks really good. And I got that bowl-shaped move. I'd like for this low now to hold. You got a little bit of a higher low right there. Um, if it can break out of this area right here, I think it could start taking off again. Um, now, this is Newmont Mining, NEM. Um, what I'm considering adding is is uh, just the the gold mining ETF, GDX. It looks like it's coming out of a, a bullish ABC pattern right here. Again, it's come close to breaking out to a new high. It, it, it's in that bowl, coming out of that bowl-shaped move. This is a way just, if you don't want to pick individual gold mining stocks, this is one in a way you can just pick the group. Now, I'm going to have a little bit of a tighter stop on this one. Um, I'm going to put my stop just below this low right here at about $27.50. And so what could happen is I could get stopped out of this one if gold goes into a correction, but I'd probably still be in uh, Newmont for the, for the longer term. Part of the reason why I want to add this is that, uh, you know, I, I want to add this last week, but one of the concerns I had is that if the market sells off, usually when it really gets panicky, everything kind of sells off. And, and um, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to see if, if – uh, if we would get that sell off uh, soon, uh, kind of wait to, to maybe get a little bit better entry. And there's still that danger that could happen here. That's why I'm going to have a little bit of a tighter stop on this one. If it does, I'll be, if the market really looks like it's going to drop, I'll be jumping back into those inverse ETFs. I should more than make up for any losses on getting stopped out of this one on those inverse ETFs, like we've been doing. Um, 
But uh, I also think that once that initial panicky sellout takes place, that even if the market goes lower, the gold should go higher. We saw this happen. We see this happen a number of times where gold becomes a safety place, a place to go um, where you're, you, you feel like your money is, is going to hold its value. And that, that's, I think that's why we're starting to see the inflows into gold right now. Um, and I think it's going to continue. And it's, I think it's just getting started. So uh, it may not. And if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. But I, I, I just like the charts so much. And, and like I said, it looks like it's kind of c coming out of this a bullish ABC pattern right here. So I'm going to jump in and put my stop right below here, like I said, at uh, 2750 roughly. So to add it, I'm going to go this blue plus. A sign right here that you can see it says add to portfolio you click on that it pulls up a little uh, order form you tell it what portfolio you want to put if you got multiple portfolios I only have one right now so I'll put it in the stock specific class um, portfolio or today's a market market update class but it's kind of the same group uh, I put in my stop price right here with 27.50 And so it puts in the, the current price of the stock. Um, and then I put in my stop loss order. And then you need to put in how many shares you want to buy. Now, this is where the number of shares is going to be. I, I, I like to look at the, the risk amount. I like that. Well, there's two things I'm looking for. I want to keep the, the total dollar amount under 10,000 usually within that that we've been sticking with about the seven to eight thousand dollar range so if i if i wanted to buy um, 300 shares well that did it right there we're well, right eight thousand eight hundred and 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 sixty five dollars would be the total amount to get into the trade 300 shares times the current stock value um, this gets back to not wanting money to try to keep the amount in the trade uh, less than 10% of the total portfolio. We're, we're at 100 and, and um, actually that, that was based on when it, when I started with $100,000. Uh, we're at 141, I think now. So um, I could actually bump that up uh, and still be within that 10%. But because we're in a bear market, I've been I've been keeping these amounts uh, actually less than than 10 10 percent of the total portfolio. That doesn't mean that this is the amount that I want to lose or willing to lose, and that's an important thing. It's it's always possible you get a massive overnight sell off that that could lose you a, a big chunk of that. But um, typically, you'd be able to stop out ahead of that. I already determined where I'm going to stop. And this also tells you then if if I do stop out at that point, what would be not only the percentage at risk, but the amount, the dollar amount. I would lose about 600 bucks if I get stopped out. Now these amounts, I like to keep the total percentage, total of of the port, of the of the account. I like to keep the risk in about the one to one and a half percent range. So again, I'm looking kind of at a range. Now you again, because you're looking at a range, what if it was a one one point five five percent? Could you still do the trade? Yeah, I mean you can make a judgment call there, but these are these are guidelines to make sure we keep keep within some parameters to allow us to keep us from, from risking too much and getting getting um too crazy. What I always talk about, though, is that this is telling you the dollar amount. Now, again, that's assuming we get stopped out right at, at where we have our stop, which doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's a little bit more than that. Sometimes you maybe you decide that you're you're most you're likely to get stopped out, and you go ahead and stop out, and and it's a little bit less than that. But it's important that you take a few minutes and you you look at that dollar amount and you say, Am I okay with that dollar amount? If I lost six hundred dollars, would I be throwing a tantrum? Would I be really upset? Would I be cursing Jerry's name for even mentioning the stock? <laughs> if that if that's the case, then that risk amount is still too high. You shouldn't be a, a you shouldn't even 
have any concern. If, if, if I kind of liken it to a slot machine, you know, how can you sit there for three hours and dump quarters in the slot machine when you're not winning every time? You know, you pull the lever and nothing happens. You lose your quarter. Why don't you freak out? Well, because it's quarter. That that's what allows you to keep playing the game until you win. You know, three thousand bucks or whatever. Is that you're you're not worried about the risk now? Again, that risk could add up. You know, if I'm dumping quarters and not winning and and I've dumped a thousand dollars worth of quarters in there. That that's a problem. Uh, that could end up freaking you out a little bit. But and and maybe this is an extreme example. I'm not I'm not suggesting the risk amount has to be that mundane that it's a, a quarter. But it should be low enough to where you're not spending your day thinking about it. Um, if the, if the trade starts going against you. You know, it's not that big of a deal. It's like, uh, oh, this one didn't work out. Um, well, on to the next one. You shouldn't be afraid to get into the next trade. This is the last area of trading that people learn, typically. And I'm trying to get it. I, I really made it my mission this last year to make it the most, the first thing you're working on. Because I'm telling you, if if this is the thing you master first, you will wipe out year, wipe, uh, take off years of heartache and pain and suffering of learning how to trade uh, until, because most people learn it because they keep getting beaten up, beaten up, beaten up, beaten up until they finally are like, I'm at a point where I've got to figure this out or I'm going to, I'm going to quit trading. And then they finally are humbled enough to say, oh, maybe all these professional traders that say the most important part of trading is accepting the risk. What does that mean? Maybe I, maybe I need to learn that. Maybe I start learning that. And then they learn it and they're like, oh, man, this is how trading should be. I, you know, this is how it's supposed to work, right? It, I, I, don't, I don't get too jacked on my winning trades where, you know, I'm out of my mind uh, uh, crazy and I'm not, I'm not, upset about my losses. I don't freak out about my losses. Um, that's how you need to trade. That's how, that's how pro professional trading is supposed to work. And uh, so many people come into it with unrealistic expectations that every trade is supposed to work. And even as much as I love the software, people come into it and start using Traders Pro and it's like, okay, I'm never going to be wrong again. I found the software that, that uh, you know, the, the, the buy signal comes, I just buy on the buy signal, sell the sell, sell signal, I'll never be wrong again. No, you're going to have losing trades all the time, but this is what allows you to make money because you're going to have more, you should make more money on your winning trades than you're losing on your losing trades. That's the goal of every trader. And that's what helps you achieve that goal is you're not, you're not too freaked out about the what you lose when you're wrong and you're not like i said you're not usually too jacked on what you make when you're right um that's the that's the perfect balance that you're trying to achieve so if that amount is too high even though the parameters are sound uh, these are good parameters for running a portfolio maybe that amount is too high and you say okay let's cut that in half i'm only going to do uh, i'm only going to do 100 shares now I only have two hundred dollars at at risk if I'm I'm wrong, and maybe that amount is more in line with what what would cause you to not be able to sleep at night, not worry too much. But even if that's too high, then you got to drop it down. Maybe you're only doing fifty shares. Now it's a hundred bucks. At some point, you got to have some amount that you're willing to risk. Um, and if it, if if a hundred bucks still bothers you, then you're probably you're probably in the wrong uh, business. Uh, you, you might need to, you might just need to go put your money in a CD at the bank where you're guaranteed to get that little amount, but you're guaranteed to get it pretty much. That, that might be your, your uh, level of investing that, that you need that you want need to get into. But anyway, that, I just wanted to go over that real quick. Um, Cause sometimes I speed through this and, and don't explain what I'm looking at. Um, but these numbers look good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, purchase. And uh, now I'm in that trade there. So you can see, too, I only have, I've got $116,000 in cash. And and so I'm, I'm 
this is what this is what your portfolio should look like when you're in bear markets and particularly when you're in bear markets that look like they can continue to go down you want to have most of your money in cash and then what we are in is is you know gold gold trades are looking still looking pretty bullish right now um i've been in oil although oil has not looked as bullish recently but that's made us a little bit of money some of the defense stocks like um Lockheed Martin and um, and, and Norfolk Drummond, those have, have done pretty well for us. But, and again, I, I keep emphasizing this. These classes are going to be different when we're in a bull market. There's a, there's, we're really going to be able to use the software to, to its fullest uh, uh, extent um, and what it's designed to do when we get back in that bull market. Now, Bear markets usually don't last uh, that long. Um, I, I think we could be in a bear market for, you know, another another six six months or so. Uh, I do know that that bear markets will tend to bottom before the economy um, bottoms. In other words, we could still have a recession next year, but uh, the market itself could start to move up before that recession is over. That that happens all the time. And and so uh, the big thing is we're waiting for that panic sell off where that VIX spikes above uh, above 30 or excuse me above 40 and um, and even then that won't tell us we're at the bottom but it'll tell us we're at least getting close we're starting to act like a bottom and um, we can start uh, uh, looking for the trend of the of the market to start acting like an uptrend again and then like i said these classes will be a lot different if you want to i keep telling people if you want to see what a, a class is like in a normal bull market just go back a, about a year year and a half uh, probably about a year and a few months because the, the we started the decline in january of this year right after the new year we started to, to drop um but you'll see a, a well some of it's the same the market update is uh, stuff is pretty much the same but as far as looking at the strongest sectors and the strongest stocks within those sectors and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, um, it, we start really diving in and using the, the, the software to its full extent. All right. That's all I have. Uh, I think if I missed anything, take a real quick peek at the S and P. Yeah, it's, it's just down a little bit. Uh, not, not down a ton. We're just kind of sideways today. Dow is still up a little bit. All right. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you Thursday for the stock-specific class. And um, see you then. Bye, everyone.